So let's continue our discussion on the auto cycle. Now recall that the auto cycle is essentially a reversible cycle that consists of four reversible processes. So these processes are shown in the following diagram. We have process A, process B, process C, and process D. Now processes A and C are adiabatic processes, while processes B and D are isovolumetric. And in this lecture, our goal will be to determine the equation for the efficiency of an engine that uses the auto cycle. Now before we begin, let's recall the general equation for the efficiency of any heat engine. So the equation is given by the following formula. The efficiency E of any heat engine is equal to 1 minus QL divided by QH. So that means if we want to use this equation to determine the efficiency of the auto cycle engine, we have to first determine what QL is and what QH is in the auto cycle. So what exactly is the QH? where the QH is simply the amount of heat that flows into our system and that heat flows into our system during process B. So as we go from position 2 to position 3, heat flows into our system and the amount of heat that flows into our system is given by QH. Now, what about the QL? Where the QL is the quantity of heat that flows out of our system, and this takes place during process D as we go from position 4 to position 1. So as we go from position 4 to position 1, QL flows out of our system. So let's actually try to determine an equation for QL and QH, and that's exactly what we do in step 1. So pathway B and pathway D are isovolumetric. That means the change in volume is zero. And because the change in volume is zero, the work done during processes B and D is also zero. So that implies, according to the first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy must be equal to Q because the W is zero in processes B and processes D. So let's begin with process process B. So in process B, QH flows into our system and QH, heat, is given by the following equation. N, the number of moles multiplied by the molar specific heat under constant volume multiplied by the difference in temperature between position 3 and position 2. So T3 minus T2, where T3 is simply our temperature at position 3 and T2 is our temperature at position 2. Now let's move on to process D. In process D we have heat that flows out of our system. So that means our Q must be negative. So we have QL is equal to negative of N multiplied by the specific or the molar specific heat of constant volume multiplied by T1 minus T4. Now we can simply rearrange this equation and put T4 on this side and T1 on this side and then that will get rid of the negative sign. So we have QL is equal to N multiplied by CV multiplied by T4 minus T1. So now we have an equation for QH and QL. So we can begin with the following equation. The efficiency of any heat engine, and that includes the auto cycle engine, is equal to 1 minus QL divided by QH. Now QL is simply this quantity, N multiplied by CV multiplied by T4 minus T1. While QH is simply this quantity, N multiplied by CV CV multiplied by T3 minus T2. So notice that the ends are the same. We have a closed system, so the number of moles stays constant, and CV is also the same. So these two terms will cancel out, and we're left with the following equation. The efficiency is equal to 1 minus T4 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2. 
and let's call this equation one. Now let's move on to step two. In step two, we essentially want to examine processes B and or processes A and processes C, our adiabatic processes. Now because these processes are adiabatic, that means the Q is zero. No heat flows into our system or out of our system during these processes. Now because we are dealing with an adiabatic process and we're assuming our gas is an ideal gas, we can use the following equation. So this is the equation for any adiabatic process that is done slowly as well as uh, using an ideal gas. So the pressure times the volume raised to alpha is equal to the constant. Now this constant could be any value and the alpha is simply the ratio of the molar specific heat under constant pressure to the molar specific heat under constant volume. So this is what our alpha is. So let's begin with process A. Process A we begin at position 1 and end at position 2. Now at position 1 the pressure 1 multiplied by the volume 1 raised to the power alpha is equal to the product of the pressure at position 2 and the volume at position 2 uh, raised to the power alpha. So let's call this equation 2. Now let's move on to process C. In process C we follow the same example procedure the pressure at position 3 multiplied by the volume at position 3 raised to alpha is equal to the pressure at position 4 multiplied by the volume at position 4 raised to alpha now let's move on to step 3 in step 3 we want to use the ideal gas law from the ideal gas law we see that for any one of these processes PV divided by T is equal to N times R, where N is simply a constant number of moles and R is also a constant. So let's once again go from position 1 to position 2 to where examining process A. So P1 V1 divided by T1 at position 1 is equal to P2 multiplied by V2 divided by T2 at position 2. And likewise we go from 3 to 4 so we're examining process C. So P3 multiplied by V3 divided by T3 is equal to P4 multiplied by V4 divided by T4. So let's call this equation 2 and this equation 3 and let's call this equation 4 and this equation 5. Now in step 4 we take equation 2 and divide it by equation 4 and likewise we take equation 3 and divide it by equation 5. The purpose of that is to get rid of the pressures. So Equation 2 divided by equation 4 gives us T1 multiplied by V1 raised to the power alpha minus 1 is equal to T2 multiplied by V2 raised to the power alpha minus 1. And likewise, equation 3 divided by equation 5 gives us this result. So let's take this equation and rearrange it and solve for T1 and then take this equation rearrange it and solve for T4. So we essentially want to represent T4 in terms of T3 and V3 and V4 and we want to represent T1 in terms of T2 in terms of V2 and V1. So if we take this equation, rearrange it and solve for T1 and plug that into this quantity and then we take this, rearrange it and solve for T4 and we plug it into this quantity, we get the following result. So our efficiency of our auto cycle engine is equal to 1 minus, so our rearranged goes here and our rearranged goes here, that's exactly what we get. Now let's go back to this diagram for just a moment. So our isovolumetric process means our volume is constant. So volume at position 2 and volume at position 3 are equal and likewise the volume at position 1 and 4 are also equal. So V1 is equal to V4 and V2 is equal to V3. So notice that V3 is equal to V2 and V4 is equal to V1. So that means we can simply replace these values with V2 and V1. 
So notice this is the same and this is the same. So we can take that out of our equation and we get the following result. Now notice we have T3 minus T2 on top and bottom. So these will cancel out and we're left with the following result. The efficiency of any auto cycle engine is equal to 1 minus V2 divided by V1 raised to the power alpha minus 1.